Now entering Nerdist.com. All right, hello and welcome to Today We Learn number 20. You made a great choice when you clicked subscribe or download, or maybe someone just left this on your computer for you to discover. Thank you guys for uh, tuning in. Thank you guys. Number 20, Today We Learned. Yeah, I can't believe... uh, 20 episodes. Yeah, it seems gotta... like just yesterday we were doing number 19. <laughs> seems like just last week we were doing number 18. My God. What an age we live in. Wow. Time and, flies when you're having fun. Yeah, time flies when you're having fun, and uh, it also flies when you uh, are you... trying to get a t-shirt. t-shirt See? Because yeah. yeah, today's episode is sponsored by T-Fury. T-Fury is the original pop culture t-shirt destination, selling unique designs every day since 2008. You can snag their t-shirts for only 24 hours starting at midnight, so hop on that. Now, you might say you missed it a little bit. Say you're missing a shirt from the past and you want to get it again. Yeah, Dan, what do you I, do? Miss, I missed the shirt from two weeks ago. Well, Razzle, you can head to the T-Fury Gallery where you can buy some old designs still in print oh, and wow. vote on others that you'd like to come back from the dead. Oh, wow, yes. So awesome. every two to four weeks, T-Fury adds more designs to the gallery, so be sure to keep an eye peeled and keep an eye out for the keep return of your favorite shirts. Yes, because I missed it, and I, uh, yeah. I, want, I want to buy a certain shirt, and it sold out. So now, you're probably wondering, it. Razzle, what sort of topics and fandoms does it cover? Absolutely. What like I like I like t-shirts and I like cool things. Yeah. So well, it... that you sound like a prime candidate for someone who oh, should no order way. from T Fury because they cover all your favorite topics and fandoms: gaming, sci-fi, anime, TV, movies, pop culture, and more. They've got it. And the shirts change daily, so check back as often as you like. Because say you don't like something today, you'll probably like it tomorrow. Also, do not forget about the T Fury After Hours sale. What is say that? you missed the day's shirt by only a little bit? They keep the sale going into the wee hours of the morning the just wee. for you. The wee hours of the morning. That's yes. a Frank Sinatra song, like, right? And the, in the wee small I'm sure. It's a Frank Sinatra song. It is. And you know what? Fuck now you. It, it is. You know what would be a great t-shirt? Frank Sinatra. That song. That song. T-Fury. Get on it. Get on that. So, guys, this December, T-Fury. Wee Man from uh, T-Fury Jacket. has some great shirts. They'll make fantastic gifts for the pop culture enthusiast in your life. Say you forgot something. Tell them it's in the mail. Tell them you got something really great, special just for them. Check out T-Fury.com. See what today's shirt is all about. T-Fury, wear your art on your sleeve. T-Fury, wear your art on your sleeve. It's pretty great. That's I mean, pretty that's, good. Uh, there you go, T-Fury. Scott Storch, uh, if you want to produce a hot beat to go under that. No, I went to him. What a goofball. Uh, well, guys, we get a really awesome episode today yeah, for you. Really uh, Allie Maynard is here. Super funny. I think Super you're going to like her. So, Super fun girl. You can grab, follow her on Twitter, uh, at Miss Maine. Yeah, so um, just uh, grab a ice-cold glass of Nog, grab yeah. a Yuletide log, and then just relax and uh, yeah. get ready to learn something. So Get ready to learn something and uh, without, enjoy your holidays. Without further ado, well. yeah, happy holidays. And uh, this is Today We Learned, number 20. Number 20. <laughs> Gentlemen, let's broaden our minds. <laughs> All righty. Uh, thanks again for listening to Today We Learned. Welcome. Another exciting, fun-filled episode just in time for the holidays. The holidays. As uh, as always, my name is Razzle. And I'm Dan. And with us is the lovely Allie Maynard. Hey, guys. How's it going? Did I say Good. that right? You did. Maynard. Nailed it. Yeah. For, for a while, Dan's like, who's our guest? I'm like, Allie Maynard? 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 I couldn't. It's okay. There's a Maynard, Massachusetts. I also know someone with the first name of Maynard, so mm-hmm. I had no issues with My how to pronounce it. My elementary school teacher said it Menard. Always Menard? Oh, intercom, holy shit. But she was a... Dutch, too, so she oh, had a okay. strong accent. Menard. Allie like, Menard. And everyone would giggle. <laughs> but there's, a, there's like a Y. Menard. There's like two Ys, right? There's two, one. What? Two Ys? One M-A-Y, Y. M-A-R-D. M-A-R-D. I'm thinking there was another... Why? There's a hidden why somewhere <laughs> in her name. Silent Can you find hey, it? You, that's what you guys learned today. Yeah. We, we learned. <laughs> we learned there's only one why. I learned there's, but there's two whys in your full name. So that's there correct. we go. Yeah, yeah. That's, uh, I'm very dyslexic. Um, <laughs> uh, as as we start off every show, we like to ask the guests to either provide a fact about themselves or something they recently learned lately. Um, do you have any interesting facts about yourself or anything you recently learned lately? Uh, what have I learned, learned lately? I, <laughs> I learned if you leave your check engine light on long enough, it immediately, well, eventually it burns out. 
Oh. <laughs> so, so it just turns off on its own. Exactly. It's not just the car giving up, like, you're not going to check this. <laughs> it's like, uh, it fixed itself. <laughs> so that's, yeah, that pretty much sums up me. That's, uh, I used to, for my first car had, had like that problem, and it would, it would make it. It would never sound right, so I would just turn the music up louder, so I didn't need to listen to my car. See, I feel it. like at that point I'd take it in because, like, my check engine light isn't working. Like that would be the yeah. thing to find when it finally stops alerting me. That's yeah. when I'd get nervous. <laughs> well, Volkswagen yeah. notoriously has their check engine lights come on, so okay. It, okay. they'll go on and then they'll go off. Oh yeah, I this used one to... was just on long enough that whatever was wrong just really broke. Yeah, <laughs> it's like fell out of my car, so the check engine light turned off. <laughs> It's okay. I just threw it up. I purged it. Came out my tailpipe. We're good. It's fine. I <laughs> sweat it. It's like a sliver. Like your your body will naturally uh, eject slivers or splinters. So don't actually pick the splinter. Don't pick them out. out. Don't try to pick the splinter out because it'll or like bee stings. It'll go in worse. Oh really? Maybe that's what I'm thinking of. Bee stings. Like if if a bumblebee stings bumblebees. I don't know if a bum or a wasp. Bumblebees. Can whatever sting. stings. We you. should find out which one that is. <laughs> yeah. Whatever can sting you, just let it sit, and your body will. If it flies, it, it can sting you. Yeah, Someone yeah. gets stung by a bee, and they they leave it in, and yeah. then later they find out. Oh no, wait, it was splinter. <laughs> it was splinter. Otherwise, <laughs> more bees will, fl- will start inside of you. <laughs> um. What kind of you have a Volkswagen? I do. Yeah, yeah. sick. I used to have a, a minivan, and the the light was on, like the check engine. It wasn't the check engine light. It was like it was uh, one of the other lights. And every time I take it in to have them computed, it was like, oh, there some air got in your gas line. Don't worry about it. So it's like, all right, <laughs> yeah. So just what never do I do worry to about it. that. <laughs> What's the point? Uh, your engine's just on fire. It's and, cool. And then the minivan exploded. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's the end uh, of the story. Emphasis on I used to have a minivan. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's funny. Um. Yeah, I used to have a minivan. I'm just trying. To, I'm, I'm, <laughs> just, just I'm looking at this list. Time. I'm looking at this list of facts here and uh, trying to think of a segue to go. Well, on here's something. Or, here's something that's uh, coming up. Uh, Christmas is just uh, yes. around the corner. Keeping the Christ in Christmas. Ah, uh, yes. Not holiday miss because that's not what it's called. No, it's called uh, Christmas. So Christmas. Here's a fun fact. Do you guys. Well, what do you guys do for Christmas? Do you have any like tradition? Hold on. Or while we're like while that? we're talking about that, while while you're bringing up uh, the spelling of Christmas. We have a fact here about Xmas, uh, and a lot of people think Xmas is actually when when Xmas is written, it's to uh, take Christ out, those of Christmas. Religions, out of Christmas. It's part of our secular master it's, plan. Yeah. I thought it was slang. Yeah. I thought it was like t nining. <laughs> yeah, spelling. It, well, well, you're not that far I've, off. You're not that far off. X it comes from the Greek letter for Chi. Yeah, it's, uh, you know the starting letter of Christ in Greek, and the use of the word Christmas uh, as Xmas traces all the way back to the year 1021 when monks in Great Britain would use uh, the symbol for Chi X when transcribing classical manuscripts into Old English in place of Christ because. You know, they mentioned Christ a shit ton back then. <laughs> yeah. So they had to have some sort of shorthand to make their lives a little bit easier so they still have the strength to tonsure their bald, to, you know, p- polish their tonsures with pumice stones and yeah. make sure they looked bald enough to get into heaven. Well, that and hmm. and on the wine bottles that the monks were making, there wasn't enough room to write Christmas, so they just would write Xmas. <laughs> Xmas wine, and it was, it, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's just, it was just a way for them to, you know, Although, shorten it. I will I say, like. according to the Oxford English Dictionary, if that's where you place your faith in stock, uh, the first recorded use of Xmas for Christmas dates back to 1551. Oh, okay. that, was, yeah. that was a good year. That was yeah. a good year. Yeah. Killer year for a briefs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Man, they really changed 1551. Nothing else of importance happened. Yeah, no, that was a kind of slow news year. Uh, Yeah, Uh, plague again. It's like on BuzzFeed, best of the year, 1551. uh, (laughs) Number one, Christmas has been shortened. Uh, anyways, Dan, you were you were bringing up Christmas yeah, so, before I interrupted with uh, that. I was fact. talking about uh, you know holiday traditions. Do you guys have anything like special in particular that you eat or drink around the holidays? I know a lot of people make eggnog stuff like that. But uh, a friend of mine, uh, he was of some sort of Scandinavian descent. They made this uh, very potent alcoholic brew called uh, Glog or Grog. I think it was. Say, I, I don't remember which one it was exactly, but it was. Uh, it was a horrifying, like... What, what was it made out of? Uh, tears, <laughs> snow, and I'm sure, like, ethanol. <laughs> Perfect. Grog. Now, does eggnog always have alcohol in it? I assume no. it does. No, no, no. no, no. Yeah. Tradi- eggnog, alcohol is added to it. Okay. It's just, like, cream and eggs and nutmeg and... Ugh. So, depending on how 
terrible your family situation. Yeah. You can just up, up the ante. <laughs> okay. Yeah, exactly. If you, do, you don't have milk, you can substitute suppose, uh, nail polish remover for that extra kick. And they can also start you on it when you're a kid. Yeah. So you, you can yeah. start it get right out of the young. carton. <laughs> have you ever drank eggnog? Egg? I have. You have. Not a huge fan. Not a huge fan. I've never had it. Just the consistency looks weird to me. It's one of those things where I like really want it when it first comes out around the holidays. Then I have like a couple sips. And I'm like, no, nah, I'm good. This well, is. Uh, I have a couple enough. sips and then I just want liquor. Yeah, it's fair. <laughs> well, that's Skip what. That's why nog. they're trying to split the difference. I was at a party recently and they had just these sketchy looking like milk bottles like those little oh. glass milk bottles that said just a post-it note on it said homemade eggnog and I could not have trusted it less <laughs> nice I've never it just looks too much like uh, pancake batter to me and I love pancakes but I don't want to drink the batter <laughs> you can't you can't reconcile the two no I can't I'm, I can't it's not it's a big just, difference yeah, it's just yeah. Like, they both have eggs. I mean, you put flour in eggnog, and I, I you could probably make eggnog pancakes. I'm sure that would be uh, an experiment. An experiment for another podcast. Yeah, not, we're here to talk about <laughs> facts, not conjecture and hypotheses. That's our, uh, our, we, we have many spinoff podcasts off of yes. this one, and uh, <laughs> coming in late 2017. <laughs> Experiment with experiments with food. Can I make this into pancakes? <laughs> it's just called it's drinking pancake yeah. batter. <laughs> drinking pancake batter. <laughs> Episode number five. Uh, blueberries. You should chew them first. <laughs> They're like the boba of uh, mm. pancake batter. Boba. I, that's one thing I've never gotten into either. Well, you don't like little tapioca no. orbs uh, just chilling in your uh, drink. I don't even like tapioca pudding, let alone. But boba. It, it comes with that giant ass straw that you can yeah. then just you become a little like a uh, BB gun. See, here's what do you drink boba? Alley? I do not. You do not. A friend of mine drinks it, and I had a good thirty minute conversation just because I still I still don't understand it. Mm-hmm. I don't get it. He was telling me how the boba is not the beverage, but it's actually like those. The boba pellets. refers to the tapioca. It's boba tea or bubble tea, as it's uh, traditionally. Referred, but like boba can, are the small tapioca balls that you put in there. Otherwise, you, it's just like usually like a milk tea base. I, I can't speak on this topic. I can't, <sighs> don't worry, he, I I've had them. He was telling me that you can put, get them in any type of beverage. Like you go to the boba store. For those of you not in Los Angeles, boba is a huge fat it's a out big, here. It's a big deal. It's, it's a, a it's huge pretty deal. big elsewhere as well. It's, not, it's not like. Uh, Juice cleanses. Is it, is it <laughs> Japanese, like, Korean? Um, I don't remember off the top of my head. Um, this is going to bother don't me. Don't get it wrong. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it is Asian American. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, it, uh, yeah, I don't get it. Look into it. Cause it's pretty tasty, but it's uh, definitely a... Uh, Hold on, Aristotle's got our, our producer. This is why we ha- we love Aristotle with his computer over there because he's, he's always googling. He's always boba. he's always fact checking everything. Usually that looking, I say is wrong. Usually looking for facts about the bounty hunter, but this time <laughs> it's Taiwanese. It's Taiwanese. Yeah. Taiwanese. Okay, I was going to say okay. Thai, but I should have added Taiwanese. <laughs> so thank God I didn't embarrass myself. Uh, well, Taiwanese is from Taiwan, right? Yes. Correct? Okay. Good. I thought you were implying it was heavens from no. Thailand. Thailand. <laughs> <laughs> it's all the way across. Holy cow. The, all the, the way across mind, the strait. You just blew my mind right there because I literally, when he said Taiwanese, that's the first place my mind went. Okay, to I was... I'm like, what? What are Taiwanese? Thai? No, my what are those my brain called? map is still good. <laughs> what? Yeah, I'm and I'm I'm 100 well, percent sober here, and I, the... my brain doesn't work properly. <laughs> I just realized uh, Mary Poppins was could have been a figment of the imagination, and that was. All that magic not actually happened. So, anyways, that blew my mind. Well, the today. reason I was yeah, asking about up. Christmas beverages is because in Sweden, every year, there's a beverage that captivates the imagination and the throats of everyone in the land. Oh, yeah. A beverage called Yulmust. Ooh, love the name. J U L M U S T. It's moose pee. It's, <laughs> I've had it. Really? It's really big in Colorado. My goodness. Yeah. It makes sense. So, Yulmust, also known as Colorado moose pee, outsells <laughs> Coke products. Uh, Every year around Christmas time, so it just—it's the biggest soft drink in the land. They uh, about five. There's there's about nine million people in Sweden. They drink about forty five million liters of it. So a that lot. is uh, a lot of uh, a lot of cola for not a lot of people. What is that? Uh, basically, Six liters. I'm doing my math. Here. I'm trying to see. Does, does it, see it doesn't really describe what it is. No, uh, it just I, says, apart, you, apart from moose pee. <laughs> well, I mean, like I understand what <laughs> moose pee is in the abject, but uh, the abstract. But you know, what does it taste uh, like? It's. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I tried looking, and all I it's, could find it's was It's pretty difficult to find Sweden. in stores uh, if you're not in Sweden around Christmas. It's not at Ikea? It, well, it actually, uh, believe it or not, it is. And some Ikeas. <laughs> However, the availability... Early, early December. 
The availability is not guaranteed. One is most likely to find it in stock in early December. Swedish market IKEA. Da da da. Not all IKEAs have them, but if you're going to go to IKEA, have the meatballs as well because the meatballs at IKEA are amazing. Um, so I think it's just like a it's just like a mold spice cola. Well, yeah. Here in in November of 2004, Pepsi. PepsiCo, the, the makers of Pepsi. <laughs> oh, thank God. <laughs> thank for the, you for clarifying. <laughs> the PepsiCo marketed a product somewhat similar in taste to you almost in the United States called Pepsi Holiday Spice. Mm. It was on sale during the 2004 and 2006 Christmas seasons, apparently not during the 2005. So uh, I, wonder, I wonder if it's like Vegemite. It's something that is beloved in the country its origin is from, but... No one likes it outside of there. I will say I don't mind Vegemite, and I might be the only person. You're you're an an alien. I'm a a monster. We're deporting you. (laughs) Welcome to the planet Earth. Uh, (laughs) Mm, What is this mysterious spread? (laughs) We've been watching you from afar. Uh, I feel like you could put holiday spice on anything and just... Like Pepsi holiday spice, that still doesn't say what it is. It's just like a spice. I would imagine it's something... What? Like nutmeggy, yeah, nutmeggy, yeah, like, like a pumpkin c- spice, under, like clovey. cedar undertones, yeah, and, uh, <laughs> undercoat of sandalwood, and uh, <laughs> there's like actual pine needles mm, in the can. Uh, is that Yuletide? I detect. During uh, it says here during the rest of the year, it is usually quite difficult to find in stores, but sometimes it is sold at other times under a different must. <laughs> So like, a, a, it's a different. It's not Yule Moose it's, anymore. It's, it's just moose. like, it's, oh, this is Summer Moose. This is Summer Moose. This is Easter Moose. This is Pumpkin Moose. You know, there's a guy in Sweden who has a bunker and he's just, just is yeah. hoarding it. Oh, of course. There's one guy. Yeah, like he's the. Oh, it's the last week of December. I'm going to go out and just yeah. buy the surplus, sell it on eBay. <laughs> Well, none of those flavors uh, compare to some of the ones that they sell in Japan because they get all the craziest, like, limited edition yeah. Pepsi flavors. Like, uh, what do they have? They had a uh, ice cucumber, oh. which was, uh, you know, a little limited edition green so cucumber Pepsi. They yeah. had a uh, Pepsi Pink, which was strawberry milk flavored Pepsi. Mm. Okay, I like the strawberry. I sit down with that. Which is, I, you are, you are, but I will eat. My body weight in Vegemite before I take one sip of Pepsi Pink. Ugh. Here's the deal. I like I like strawberry, <laughs> mm-hmm. but I don't like strawberry milk. I don't know. I don't like, I mean, I like strawberry milkshakes, but I don't like strawberry chocolate milk. This, yeah. this is what I say. I like strawberry, like milk. I can deal with Pepsi. I trust these companies enough that they do enough <laughs> market research and focus groups I, that they're not going to put something out there that I tastes like shit. I don't know. Because there's also salty watermelon Pepsi was like the most recent big. Have, okay, have you ever had uh, Spanish candy where it's usually like a watermelon hard candy covered in chili? No, like but that's, chili that powder. sounds good. It's awesome. Because like chili and citrus, like chili and watermelon, chili and mango, that goes really well together. No. So I no, believe I don't like those. You don't like those? What you're, about. Mm. you're wrong. I don't like <laughs> Your what mouth you're... is wrong. I don't like what you're talking about right <laughs> you have now. You eat one and uh, drink a beer. Yeah. Uh, see, I don't drink, so I can't do that. You can drink an O'Doul's. <laughs> I could drink an O'Doul's. Mm. <laughs> or just blend up a uh, loaf of bread. Oh, sounds so <laughs> gross. You guys are gross about <laughs> chili, watermelon, and ground up bread. And yeah. Well, bread. how would you like a Pepsi White from back in 2008? It was limited edition Pepsi with yogurt flavor. Is, is that oh. an Obama protest? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was Japan's, uh, there was their way I of suddenly up. protesting. Actually, there is a city in Japan called Obama, uh, and I went there really? when I was there in 2008, and they were selling these little uh, drones, these little cakes. It was before that. <laughs> Come on, man. Why are you going to ruin my dessert story with your fucking politics? I feel, like, I feel like Pepsi White would be the official sponsor of the Republican Party. Yeah. <laughs> Brought to okay. you by... Uh, Obamacare. Congress anyways. Extreme! I, <laughs> anyways, sorry. Anyways, Dan, you were talking about I was dessert. saying, before I was so rudely interrupted with uh, by nonsense... Uh, and propaganda. Uh, Don't give a tuna I'm, man I'm, in his yeah. dessert. I'm, I'm trying sorry. to tell you about some cookies. They're not cookies. They're, I'm sorry uh, to uh, interrupt your innocence. They make these delightful things called Anpan, which is these little bread, uh, like cakes, with red bean paste inside, but they managed to print Obama's face on all Wait, the cakes. what is it filled with? Red bean paste. Red bean paste. Adzuki bean is a you, sweet red bean. Your palate, man. No, no, I don't know. I, no. This is this well, is like a Japanese. He, he uh, doesn't have a sense of smell, so that doesn't. Really? No, no. I this is I fucking had Izuki bean <laughs> before I lost my sense of smell. Jeez, you're like, oh well, this guy doesn't have any legs. Uh, let's just talk about stairs. He doesn't know what he's talking about. This motherfucker's never been on a second floor in his life. 
Um, no, but it's a sweet red bean. It's I saying red bean out loud. You're well, like, okay, what you the hell is that? Okay, you lost Your credibility is already yeah. down here. All right, hold on. Nutella peanut butter, uh, <laughs> vanilla bean. Did I win anything back? Yes. Uh, okay. <laughs> Um, no, it's like a sweet, it's a sweet red okay, bean paste. I'll, I'll take your word It's like a it. Japanese delicacy. It tastes a lot better than it sounds, I promise. All right. Another thing that tastes a lot better than it sounds, peanut butter on a hamburger. Try it. Get at me, haters. <laughs> I, dude, I'm on board with that. I like peanut butter very much. Um, first off, I, this is news to me because as the listeners of this podcast uh, know, and Allie doesn't because she's, this is her first time on here, uh, Daniel here doesn't have a sense of smell. Now, I've always assumed he would never had a sense of smell, but just recently he said he lost his sense of smell. Yeah, around what, uh, age 12. I'm basically the world's shittiest X-Man. Uh, Aww. <laughs> How'd you lose it? You just lost it? Or was uh, it that red bean? Well, it was a dark and stormy night, <laughs> and uh, flames just shot up my nose. No, it just, uh, just, honestly, I don't know. I just kind of went away one day. I kind of assumed I had a cold, and then... Here I am, like, ten plus years later. Did, and did it, uh... some other sense become amazing? Well, I can jump ten feet vertically. <laughs> okay. I, should, I should have led with that. Um, and also, I can hear dogs and whales. Nice. <laughs> like the worst daredevil. Like, uh... Yeah, I'm like, oh, this is terrible. I, I can jump really... I'm not even a lawyer. I can jump really high, but my reflexes are horrible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, you should just get hit by the car that's beating towards me. <laughs> you can do really cool things. You're just really slow at reacting. Yeah. If, if you just if you just give me a minute, it'll be super impressive. <laughs> That's funny. But yeah, long story short, I don't know what's going on. They put me on nasal steroids for a while, which is a terrifying prospect to me because I thought I was going to have like a six pack on the. Did your of my nose's nose. balls get huge? Yeah, no, they get smaller. That's what happens with steroids. <laughs> oh, okay. Unless you have some crazy new steroids that just inflate the balls. <laughs> um, Lance Armstrong, we're looking at you. <laughs> Here's a briefly a little bit uh, non. There's no segue here about what we were talking about to bring up this interesting fact, though. Uh, we were to this next topic. I'm going to bring up. I and I remember two specific things when I talk about it. I remember uh, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, and I also remember Batman Returns. Now, and Batman and Bill and Ted's. Long story short, here uh, the topic I'm getting to is the Iron Maiden. Um, uh, obviously, yes. and uh, Bill and Ted's. They the they were sentenced to the Iron Maiden, and they thought it was the the heavy metal band Iron Maiden. Mm-hmm. And in Batman Returns, Bruce Wayne gets in his Iron Maiden to slide down into the Batcave. Now, most people think that the Iron Maiden was actually a medieval torture device. However, uh, according to Wikipedia, which it's is one not of, according to Wikipedia, it is it is not the Iron, Iron Maiden is often associated with the Middle Ages. However, no account has been found earlier than 1793. Although medieval torture devices were cataloged and produced during the 19th century. Now, a lot of people, uh, there was a professor, um, most people believe in Iron Maidens, but it's regarded in the science and in the through historians that the Iron Maiden was uh, produced just to get people to museums as like propaganda and uh, okay, it was <laughs> so the, in the Iron Maiden for the people who don't know that's the sort of it, it's like this looks like a big metal uh, like thimble almost it opens up on a hinge you get inside and then you get stabbed to death yeah. they're just like yeah uh, with knives Wolfgang Schild uh, professor of criminal law criminal law history and philosophy of law at the University of Bellyfield has argued the supposed Iron Maidens were pieced together from artifacts found in museums to create spectacular objects intended for commercial exhibition. So like trying to make IKEA furniture without uh, any directions. Absolutely. It's like hey to the Iron Maiden. Our museum attendance is down. Let's, <laughs> let's fucking make, make some let's shit make that'll make scare up this some people. Torture device. That's brilliant. Uh, can him. we just put a bunch of knives in this trash barrel? <laughs> so yeah, Iron Maidens weren't actually uh, weren't actually used for torture, but they are still actually a band. So pretty can, cool. can we just talk about how we went from talking about Dan's nose to torture? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Seamlessly. Because Seamlessly. when people talk about all the wonderful scents that they get to experience throughout the day, it's torture to me. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, so they're... they're uh... I don't even have a handicapped parking sticker. You what, don't? What injustice is that? I feel like, that? wasn't there a career Where's... enthusiasm where like a guy with a lisp had uh, got to use the handicapped <laughs> <Really? stall? laughs> Wasn't that a thing? <laughs> I would, I would certainly believe it. <laughs> that was a good show. Lucky lisping bastards. Uh, it's an awesome show. Well, we're talking about old, uh, old things that don't exist. Um, old wives' tales. Let's talk a little bit about old wives' tales. <laughs> What's your favorite old wives' tale? Oh gosh. Uh, <laughs> pff, 
I can't remember. What's, let's start with yours. What's your favorite old wife saying? I'm trying to think of mine. It would probably be... Uh, uh, that you'll get a cold if you don't wear a sweater. Okay. Um, <laughs> shit. What would be mine? Uh, I feel uh, like... Chupacabra. Chupacabra is an old wives' tale. Or like the gangs using their brights. Is that, that's considered like an old wives' tale, right? Like, like don't flash your brights. If somebody has their brights oh, on, right. they'll turn don't and flash you. their brights because they'll follow you and murder you. That's like a really? old wives' tale. Yeah, that's an old I have one. never heard that. No. I am can't believe I, I haven't my, been murdered My parents yet. didn't lie to me a lot. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, we're not going to bullshit all you. Right. The world's a dangerous <laughs> place. Oh, sorry we didn't all have cool parents, Allie. <laughs> yeah. With their young wives' tales. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, wives' tale, what was that? that? Uh, you'll grow hair on your palms if you masturbate. That was the thing, right? Yes, old wives' old tales. Old wives' tales. Anyways, mm-hmm. I never really... Yeah. <clears throat> I always thought it was just because it was like old, you know, old stories or whatever. But old wives' tale, uh, apparently it comes from... It's a derogatory epithet. Uh, used to indicate that a supposed truth is actually a superstition or something untrue to be ridiculed. The phrase comes with the assumption that a story told by an old woman could not have credibility, regardless of the particulars of the story. So uh, that's pretty funny. So, so it's uh, Perfect. So, a rich history of sexist undertones. <laughs> <laughs> Women are stupid, basically, what, is what we're saying. Uh, that's not surprising. When, see, you, when you brought up old wives' tales, immediately that's where my mind went. I'm like, oh, great, these are... Facts that aren't true yeah. that are because some untrustworthy old right. crone. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. What would be like a modern day wives' tale? Like, don't bleach your hair too much, or like, don't bleach your butthole, yeah. or you'll get, yeah. or like, you won't get a husband. You'll turn into a frog. <laughs> like, what's the? Ah, <laughs> oh, that's a good question. Uh, um, like, don't leave. Oh, I feel your, like it's, your Facebook. I feel like it's open all that. Or... Yeah, it's like uh, if by posting this on your Facebook wall. Your copyright will be protected, and you will not be your privacy will not be invaded. Yeah, or like, or if you if like this a hundred thousand times, yeah. the doctor will perform this life saving surgery <laughs> on my child. There you go. But if you don't get a hundred thousand likes, he's dead. I feel like there's yeah, exactly. I mean, I feel like they're all technology based, right? Well, mo- right. one mo- yeah, it, a lot of them are technology based because that's the easiest thing to fool people about yeah. nowadays. Um, like that. Dude. Right, well, they had something recently. Uh, website 4chan, uh, which is <laughs> I love 4chan. Uh, like if like Reddit uh, with a bigger uh, like Basal social fans. anxiety and uh, sociopathic <laughs> disorder. Uh, they, it's so funny, but it's so mean. <laughs> it, this it's is true. really awful. So when the Xbox Ones came out, a uh, big point of a uh, big point sticking point for a lot of people is that there was no backwards compatibility. You couldn't play games from the 360 on it. You couldn't play old Xbox games on it. Basically, it's another way for Microsoft to get more money from you. Yeah. Makes sense from a marketing standpoint. However, they made this fake official looking graphic and spread it pretty widely that said by doing by following these steps, you'll be able to enable backwards compatibility. It's just turned off on your console. What it actually did is sent the console into an endless cycle of restarting where you could never access the menu again. It would basically oh, brick man. your console, awesome. ruining it completely. So and awesome. uh, I think it might have voided your warranty in the process because you're not supposed to be fucking around. And like hacking. The de- your... Yeah, like you're entering the right. developer mode and you're not supposed to do that. Wow. Makes me so happy right now. I bet now. these will be called old bloggers tales. Yeah, like... Oh. <laughs> That's well, so they, funny. And they had one of my favorite Holy comments shit. from this thread was uh, this guy just posted, uh, help, how do I turn this back? I did it to my brother's Xbox. Uh, <laughs> like, uh, oh, not even yours. How could you? Holy cow. Yes. Is it wrong that I find fucking with people like that to be amazing? No, that's uh, you're just experiencing the delights of uh, schadenfreude. I'm such a guy when it comes to being a dick. That's so fucking <laughs> funny. That's so funny to me. Oh, I love gullible people. Oh, man, that's awesome. Well, I imagine... Check out this segue. Yeah, I imagine segues. that started a lot of fights. <laughs> we love segues Between here, people Ellie. who know each other pretty well. You know what else has a lot of fights between people who know each other pretty no, well? No, I don't, Dan. Professional ice hockey. Oh. Wow. My God. Seamless. That's a Seamless. power play, that's to fucking, use more hockey a, terminology. That's a, uh, what, do you, what do they call it? A, a triple duck, no? That's it's a, a triple duck. That's when you duck? watch triple all hat. three Mighty Ducks movies, a triple hat, and then you wake hat, up three days trick. later. Hat trick is what I'm looking for. you've been fired from there. your job. Okay, uh, hat you trick. I don't watch sports, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. All right, all right. it was an okay bounce pass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Give me that. Thank you. Thank you. It's a breakaway. It's a breakaway. Do you guys watch hockey? Are you a big hockey heads? I actually watched all actually watched all three Mighty Ducks movies in May or June. Really? Yeah. Do they hold up? The they do, and yeah. I did, and I did a cool runnings viewing as well. Does that hold up? Fabulous! Yeah, everyone should go watch cool. Now, runnings. Why, Good. Why? Oh, I'm always I'm always curious when these movies from our youth, uh, if they you know stand the test of time. You know time. what wouldn't hold up? Which I just watched was uh, Home Alone. 
either of them. I watched yeah. really? the first one on a oh, flight last a month, and I watched Home Alone 2. Because if they had cell phones, yeah. it's over. No, yeah, they over. couldn't it's reboot done. it nowadays. No, no way. Like, yeah. just their alarm not going off in the morning. Yeah. That you have a house full of, you know, 20 exactly. people. Now it's, now it's your alarm is going off too much. Right. Yeah. But I will say Fern Gully does not hold up. <laughs> that movie, upon subsequent <laughs> revisiting, is just so much garbage. That's some insight um, right there. Yeah. So why wh- that interests me that you watched them in, in June. Why did you watch all three of those in June? Just You were that bored or it's, you were just bored? Stone. It's the off season. You got to watch game tape. <laughs> <laughs> you know, see how you can improve for the season ahead. No, I, it was we watched the first one with my roommates and I, and then oh, nice. it just turned into a day. <laughs> and ten hours later, <laughs> yep. the right, so journey of Goldberg from... I'll tell you what. When you have that much access to things, it's like on, being able to watch things on demand is the worst for killing time like it's the worst for like it, your day's gone next thing you know it's true it goes by oh anyways well, it's like that uh that portlandia sketch where they're watching battlestar galactica yeah. yes. and they just yeah. have to keep watching one more episode yeah. i did that for three days straight <laughs> i that's the reason i won't start some shows yeah. okay so i haven't seen the wire yet don't oh it's real good and i but... and someone asked me do you want to watch the pilot last night yeah. and we actually watched the pilot of portlandia instead oh, so yeah. you bring that up but i said no because i don't want to lose the next two weeks of my life yeah, yeah. no i remember uh, very vividly when i was in japan i just started watching the wire and i'd be up to like five in the morning yep. every night i'm like i should have been asleep three episodes ago but yeah. mm-hmm. i i had to stop watching battlestar galactica because of that like <laughs> three days went by and i'm on the third season and i'm like i got shit to do like yeah. I, <laughs> I, I i stopped watching it because i have that i have such an addictive personality like that it'll just be i'll be gone like yeah. no. but you, because you have to know what happens yeah, yeah. absolutely that, it happens with certain uh, series oh man i'm so <laughs> fucking curious all the time i'm so curious well, the good thing about Battlestar is it's way better at the beginning. Yeah. No, don't tell him that. Do you feel <laughs> sad he just got? Well, he said he had to stop watching, so just think that you stopped yourself at the Perfect. right time. Like I'm trying it. to put a silver lining stopping, on this playbook. I'm stopping. <laughs> that was a good movie. It was I a good movie. That American Hustle. Anyways, back to hockey. You were going to say some facts about Yeah, so hockey. about hockey, uh, you know, it's just a series. Of, it's basically just ice capades until two guys start fighting each other. Okay, yes. Um, and on ice. <laughs> yes. So the <laughs> WWE fights, on ice. The fights are uh, a big highlight for a lot of people, and uh, but unfortunately, there's a lot of penalties involved. But uh, there's a way to avoid getting an, unsportsman, uh, an unsportsmanlike conduct uh, penalty when you're fighting someone in hockey, okay. and that is... If you remove your mask, if you remove your face shield, your helmet. So if you expose your face, I guess that's considered being sportsmanlike. It's apparently Rule 46 in the official NHL Rules Table of Contents. It's all about fighting and fights in general. Rule 46.6, face protection. If a player penalized as an instigator in an altercation is wearing a face shield, including a goalkeeper, he shall be assessed an additional unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. Should the player, including a goalkeeper, who instigates the fight be wearing a face shield but removes it before instigating the altercation, the additional unsportsmanlike conduct penalty shall not apply. So... Take off your hat. Take off your hat. Take off your head. Uh, yeah, you know, if you're gonna go all rock'em sock'em robots on uh, one of your opponents, just make sure to just, take uh, off your mask first, because that can mean the difference between hanging out in the box for an extra minute and <laughs> scoring the game winner. See, that's I, so- well, I think that is. It's almost sportsman like if you're gonna throw a punch at someone, yeah. to be exposed yeah. because you want to fight them. Yeah, so yeah. Let's, let's well, do this. I would say, I would argue in the interest of safety, I would feel like having additional headgear is probably better and more considerate because like the nfl now you we're, we're talking about helmet. sportsmanship not safety yeah. okay yeah sports safety's for losers <laughs> sportsmanship is for fighters i mean that I, it just baffles me like I, I don't watch sports i'm not a sports fan as it is but like just have not don't allow fights well i, I think like, this is, is also saying there'd be less fights because if you could st- throw a punch at someone okay. and you're wearing a helmet yeah yeah. You'd be throwing punches all the time. Yeah. Whereas if someone really pisses you off it's, and it's personal, you're like, let's it's throw true. down. It's true. If you get a bunch of dudes together with pads and helmets, they eventually will start punching each other in the head. <laughs> Source, any Fair lacrosse enough. practice. We had helmet boxing afterwards. Fair enough. All right. Yeah. So, yeah, the that's, more you know. That's why I don't watch hockey. <laughs> that, that's why. Russell takes particular umbrage with this. I, uh, yeah. Uh, sh- series they just watched... Uh, in entirety. Thank God there's only one season, but it's uh, Behind the Mask, a Hulu original Oh, series. was that all about the mascots? All about the mascots. How was it? It was what? amazing. It was what really, it was, cr- it's crazy. Yeah. I don't tell you too much about it, you just gotta watch it. Yeah, they they profile all these different professional mascots. And it's well, all no, like- it's, one kid is uh, in high school. Yeah. 
and probably has the worst mascot costume <laughs> you've ever seen. It looks what like is it? a retarded elf wearing a tree costume. No way. It's a tree. They're the cedars. He looks like he's wearing a dress. And he's oh, like the fighting elf tards. chubby kid with glasses. I mean, the poor thing. So it's him. The and poor then thing. <laughs> this, sound like this a mother. awful, awful <laughs> douchebag. There's no... This guy is quintessential douchebag. He's a UNLV mascot. Mm-hmm, yeah, he's, it's on, he's on his sixth year there. And he's failing all his classes, so he doesn't know he's going to graduate. He might have to do seven years. And then it goes to a minor league guy, Canadian, super sweet, ice hockey. He dressed up as a penguin. He does a lot of charity for kids. Great. Try and make it to the majors. And then Bango, who is the Milwaukee... I think, Brewers? Uh, no. Baseball? Professional basketball. Oh, basketball Milwaukee. Maybe not Milwaukee. Wisconsin, Milwaukee, whatever. Somewhere around there. Sports. Sports. Yay. <laughs> okay. Uh, and he got mascot of the year 2010. He does crazy tricks. He's a real gymnast. That's awesome. So he's like jumping off, doing flips off of trampolines, dunking. He has this whole team of guys coming down from rafters. <laughs> that- good one. Have you guys seen this <laughs> clip that was going around the internet recently of the Toronto Raptors uh, mascot who... He was getting lowered from the ceiling, and he somehow, like, blacked out in the suit. So he gets lowered oh, from the ceiling. I've seen this. And then just down on the ground, and then his costume just, like, deflates on him. <laughs> it's amazing. And a bunch of people rush in. Yeah, they're like, to... oh, my God, is this <laughs> raptor dead? I haven't, but for the sake of this, I'm going to pretend I did and say that was awesome. Yeah, just go- look it up. I'll look Today it up. you learned what you should be You never know how that s- statement's going to end when someone says, did you see that clip on the internet? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, and all the kittens and the decapitation at the end. Yeah. That'd be, I'd, I'd be on for that. <laughs> someone had a and, joke. Uh, his, head, his head got decapitated by the basketball <laughs> By <rim>. Grumpy Cat. <laughs> Oh my god! My friend has a joke uh, that I tried to make the best Instagram picture ever, but the kittens kept drowning in the latte. (laughs) 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 That's one thing that when when did when did you know? Like I'm all for being creative and like. Look, I get your you 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 need to. I mean, I work at a restaurant. You're right talking about the explosion of latte art recently. Yeah, like what is (laughs) like when when like I'm all for there. Some people I I get it, but I. Just give me my fucking coffee. Don't draw pictures in it. Like, Some people like are it's... incredible. I saw one guy who did uh, Brian Cranston as Walter White. Yeah, like, but how in how... excruciating detail. It was like, I'm, really like, impressive. I get that, but that's time. Like, if I was a business owner, I wouldn't want my, my employees It's part of the charm. Ten minutes to it's going to bring people in there. Like, it's part of the charm. Well, a lot of those places... Uh, and that better be, like, like, a $30 coffee. Well, a lot of the places, A, the charge is through the roof, but B, the like whole, like, slow service culture thing is like a selling point. They're like, oh, come here. We'll take our time because we're doing such a good job on your food. Razzle just wants the quick and easy yeah. out. Razzle just wants coffee shot out of a t-shirt cannon <laughs> into his mouth from a moving car. I won't disagree with that. <laughs> <laughs> and you can help make that dream come uh, why true do you on have Kickstarter. A, why do you have a third degree burns on your face? Because I was trying to catch the coffee. Because I'm mouth. in a rush. <laughs> my when time the, is valuable. I mean, the coffee, that, I mean, the coffee would get cold, right? Like, how long? I don't know. I mean, it's cool, don't get me wrong, but yeah, it's kind of like... Get cold. The coffee's not going to get cold, trust me. Those things, are they're at scalding temperatures. I mean, I get it. I mean, it looks cool, but everybody, like, I don't need to see it. I don't know. Stop. I don't know. So, if you're I'm ever, a, if I'm you're a ever funny serving dude. Razzle... I'm, I'm, a, I'm a very... He doesn't give a shit for aesthetics. Just pour a bunch of ingredients on a plate or put shit in a glass and you're good to go. And I get it. There's sunrises and sunsets. I don't want to see those either. <laughs> so, but why, post why selfies. do you have an Instagram Listen, then? <laughs> I just want people to post more selfies so I don't get... In trouble posting mine. Okay, that's it. That's a good dream. Just hide, I just, I just want to hide. I just want to be able to crowd. I just want to be able to post stupid selfies of me with stupid jokes. Is that what you asked Santa for? Is that the maybe, one thing on your maybe. list? Dear Santa, maybe. dear Santa, <laughs> just make everyone else stop taking pictures of their food. Dear Santa, I don't like themselves. coffee, so I can't post pictures of mine. <laughs> you should just walk up to other people and take pictures. Right, can of I take their a picture coffee? of your coffee? Excuse me, you can get in the shop. You know what I'm going to start doing? I'm going to start. I'm going to just start. Uh, posting pictures of normal looking coffee and be like, oh my god, this is amazing. <laughs> wow. Like what it's a, a rich, wor- a, what a a rich shade shot. of burnt yeah. umber. Or it's a, what's that, Worcestershire? Te- what's Rorschach? It? Rorschach. Worcestershire. Worcestershire, Worcestershire, Worcestershire sauce. sauce check. Yeah. yeah. What does this sauce look like to you? Uh, <laughs> it's like Worcestershire. So, how did uh, you guys find out that Santa was not real? Uh, I pieced it together because he and the Easter Bunny and a lot of these holiday types had the same handwriting as my mother. So being the little encyclopedia brown that I was, I busted her. I had an older brother. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I told my younger sibling, and I did the same thing. Mm-hmm. 
because I found out the Easter Bunny wasn't real. <gasps> and my mom admitted it. And then I just sat there maybe for like two seconds and thought about it and turned to her and said, Santa isn't real either, is he? No. How old were you? Uh, I was probably like 10. Yeah, like I think that's around, yeah. that's like around the age. Like once you get double digits, you're like, I ain't nobody's dummy. <laughs> yeah. Probably like fifth grade. Yeah, okay. I think that was probably me. I think. Yeah. I mean, I had an older brother, so I probably I was very stupid as a child. Those were your first lasted. words. Santa isn't real. I probably would have lasted <laughs> to like seventh grade or sixth grade. But my brother was like, "Hey, guess what? Our presents are up in the attic. Do you want to go see him?" And I'm like, "What? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he dropped them off early?" And it was the year of. I'm fairly certain it was the year the Super Nintendo came out, and we were getting a Super Nintendo for Christmas. Oh, oh rad! That's awesome. That's a good thing so, to see early. <laughs> yeah, it, it's really fun when if you're the older sibling and you find out first uh, that first Christmas or two that your siblings don't know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> see, I'm an only child, so I didn't get to have that rich experience. I, I can see that. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> so, hey, guess what? She's okay. referring to my strong profile. <laughs> <laughs> um, we were mentioning uh, Microsoft earlier. Go on. And uh, Microsoft owner Bill Gates. We were talking about Reddit and 4chan. Bill Gates... Just did a uh, Secret Santa Reddit Secret yeah, Santa. Yeah, he did. He got matched with someone. Uh, do you are you familiar with Reddit Secret Santa? He, are you guys doing it? I'm uh, not. I t- I missed the day to sign up, so I couldn't do it. I by the time this posts, uh, my gift should be arriving to a lucky so and so in uh, I think Arizona. Okay, I think that's where huh. he is. I boycotted it because there's no black Secret Santa. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you got matched with Megan Kelly. Yeah. <laughs> well, la- last year I got matched the first time. No gift. Like, the guy didn't send me anything. I got rematched. Still no gift. So, I got I got grifted twice. Oh, uh, no. I'm hoping way. I get rematched with the same guy. So, it's just one fucker out there. Um, or you're the guy Bill Gates donated the cow to? <laughs> yeah, well, Bill Gates. yeah. Bill Gates uh, basically got matched with this girl and sent her a little stuffed cow in the mail, uh, along with a book about uh, traveling and some other stuff. But the stuffed yeah. cow... Part of a thing called the Heifer Foundation, where it's this charity that I think they actually donate the cow, full cow to like a, a living, breathing, mooing cow to families, so they can then use them to produce milk, produce and, milk right. and then eventually steak. Yeah, but anyways, Bill Gates uh, owns Microsoft. Bill Gates also has the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, which they do a lot of philanthropy. And one of the gen- uh, one of his best friends who donates. A ton of money to that is a gentleman by the name of Warren Buffett. Warren B. Uh, Warren B. He's a very dear friend of mine. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you get... know the Wizard of Omaha? <laughs> <laughs> we go way back. We both had paper outs in the 1910s. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm very, I look, I look very then. good for my age. Uh, Warren Buffett, uh, the businessman, philanthropist, friend of Bill Gates, and who many consider to be the most successful investor of the 20th century, lives in the same house in the central Dundee neighborhood of Omaha that he bought in 1958 for $31,000. Today, it's valued around $700,000, although he also owns a $4 million house in Laguna Beach. Because, I mean, have you been to Laguna? Come on. (laughs) But uh, that's pretty interesting. Warren Buffett, you know, I'd like to think if I was ever like that just ridiculous rich, I'd kind of live somewhat the same. Do you know what I mean? I think someone that makes their money like that, they just are who they are, and the money is like a side effect of that. Yeah, like what? I mean, he's got a four million dollar house in Laguna Beach, but he he's still he's an old dude. He what does he need a mansion for? He's right. living with his wife in Omaha, doing his mm-hmm. thing. I agree. I have a question. Absolutely. What did she get, Bill Gates? She didn't get matched with Bill Gates. It's not like you just get matched with the same person who's giving uh, you a gift. Well, like, did he get a gift? Probably. He will. I imagine he will get a gift. I um, want to know what he's getting. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I want to <laughs> know. I got. I got you a MacBook. <laughs> and you, now, do you know the full name? You only know the first name, right? Uh, no. It's the way it works. Is it depends on how much, however much information they want to put okay, on their so profile. So Bill's not going to put Bill. So Gates. he yeah. might. He might have put Bill. Um, I'm sure he has like a sh- like a forwarding address or something yeah, yeah. like that. Uh, but then you basically put down a list of like your likes, your dislikes, um, and then you can link your Reddit account so they can check your posting history. I wonder where Bill Gates posts on Reddit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> probably Backslash. probably Gone Wild. <laughs> yeah, I was just you. gonna say that. Yeah. <laughs> For those uh, of you that don't know, Gone Wild is uh, just Reddit.com uh, backslash r backslash Gone Wild. I believe. Right? Basically, not at work. If though. you remember, <laughs> yeah, <it> is, <laughs> don't do that. It's it very much not safe for work. If you remember the Gone Wild videos that were preceded by the word girls, it's pretty similar. It's pretty much that. It's basically people just take nude selfies of themselves and put them on the internet Perfect. for people to comment upon. Are you a Redditor, Ali? Do you I, surf? I Reddit? don't do a lot of Reddit. <laughs> you don't do a lot of Reddit. I don't do a lot of Reddit. I've been I'll, on Reddit. I I surf Reddit a lot, but I don't post. But 
one of my favorite things to surf is explain like I'm five. <laughs> and it's it's a post of people saying people like me just being like ex- explain this like pretend I'm five and tell me how this is a thing tell me how this works mm-hmm. that's one of my favorites uh, uh, my favorite Reddit subreddits it's a really good one yeah it's good yeah. stuff there's a YouTube video I wish I knew the name of the clip but uh, a guy produces videos reenactments between him and his two year old daughter oh, <laughs> the two year old daughter have you seen this, this I one? haven't but I'm very intrigued and, but it's played by like an old dude it's like 30 and he sounds like a total psychopath that's amazing <laughs> just these like little girl lines coming out of this horrifying guy's right. mouth and this other one someone showed me recently it was uh, two older gentlemen like very refined Englishmen in this like whiskey bar and they start reenacting <laughs> this this um, argument that's on a web page or uh, like a this... blog about it's a believer versus a D1 oh, holy a directioner yeah a directioner and they're just like, you're not even a real believer. Yeah. Like, oh, man. Just, is, isn't this like, is, so is that classic. like YouTube comment theater or something like that? Exactly. It's all black and white. Cool. It's, that's so funny to me. It's like hilarious. when Michael It's like when Michael Shannon was on Funny or Die reading that sorority letter that, that got oh, sent yeah, out. That, well, they also have those uh, commercials right now with, uh, what's his name? Uh, virtual voice of Darth Vader. Um, uh, James. Simba. No. Yeah. Uh, yes, Mufasa. he also voiced Mufasa. It's James. Why can't I remember James Earl name? Jones? Thank you, James Earl Jones, uh, and uh, Malcolm McDowell, where they're just reading like text message speak, yep. like totes McOats and all that stuff. Oh, I well, I that. just saw that, and it reminded me of this other video. Ah, so okay. very nice. That's awesome. It's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Really cool. Here's a <laughs> here's something I didn't realize. Uh, the Flintstones, the television show, The Flintstones had a laugh track. It's a cartoon. Yeah, live action audience just watch uh, the animators <laughs> sweating at their desks. A cartoon with a uh, with a laugh track. The Flintstones was the most financially successful network animated franchise for three decades until The Simpsons debuted, and uh, there was a laugh track in there. So that was I remember that. That's weird. Yeah, I didn't yeah, realize that. It's uh, I, yeah, it's one of those things you probably just uh, took for granted when you were watching as a kid. Yeah, um, I, I like the Jetsons too. Jetsons, Jetsons are solid. Were good. Jetsons are solid. A lot of those old Hanna Barbera cartoons, though, are pretty hit or miss. Like when you start getting to the uh, deeper cuts. Yeah, like uh, Wally Gator. Wally Gator, remember Wally Gator? Jabba yeah, Jaw? I was a big. Uh, what was the Rocky and Bullwinkle? Yeah, that was good. That's Aesop's right. Fables. How? Speaking of Rocky and Bullwinkle, doesn't that that the Peabody Mr. and Mister Sherman? Doesn't that movie look amazing? Oh yeah, I'm, I'm so excited. excited to go see that. Any Pixar though? That's not Pixar. It's not. I think it's DreamWorks. I think oh, it is DreamWorks. DreamWorks. But that used, Pixar DreamWorks used to be a, a su- subsidiary. Yeah. Dr- uh, broke free. DreamWorks has been killing it lately. I'll tell you what. With yeah, a, they're, uh, How to Train Your Dragon was a, amazing. Mm-hmm. I really enjoyed uh, Rise of the Guardians from them. That uh, Okay. That, that owl based movie? Based on those children's books. No, that's not the owl <laughs> movie, you asshole. <laughs> that owl movie? What was that's that That's the Guardians of... That's uh, uh, Guardians uh, of Gahul. Gahul. You lost me at Guardians. Oh, the Rise of the Guardians was the... Rise um, of the Guardians was like all the holiday people, like yeah, Santa Claus, good. Jack Frost, Easter oh, Bunny. Oh, I didn't see that one. And that uh, the Tooth Fairy had to like band together to defeat the uh, the Sandman. Yeah, that was, was really, awesome. really, really I well recently done. saw uh, a friend of mine got a 3D TV. Ooh. So we rewatched... How, our... how is it? Awesome, actually. Cool. Uh, yeah, it was instead of your typical, you where you have the red lens right. and the blue one, and it has the image that comes towards you, it looks three-dimensional in the opposite direction. Interesting. So it gives it depth. No way. Yeah. And we watched Wreck-It Ralph. What's your friend's name? I'm going to befriend this person. And come <laughs> well, it's actually their parents' television. Okay. What are their so parents' names? What are their, what are their parents' names? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, what was your daddy? I'm 31. I can, be the, I can be the young friend to yeah. an adult. It was a nice TV. And I, I was like, a pff, 3D TV. But yeah. there's Pixar movies in 3D. Did you, have you seen Bomb. Frozen? At Frozen? No, I don't it's oh, Frozen fantastic. is so good. Okay. I want to see it again. Go it's so it. good. It is really it's good. It's really good. I'll do it. And that is the, I'll do it if you guys rewatch Cool Runnings. Of course. That's deal. Yeah, double feature: Cool Runnings, then Frozen. <laughs> yeah, finally, someone's keeping on theme. <laughs> cool Runnings. Uh, speaking of uh, Frozen, um, the opposite of Frozen is uh, not Frozen. <laughs> <laughs> My, the opposite of Frozen is microwave. Is it melting? It's, uh, microwaves. Microwaves. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Drowning. What I'm getting at, and I'm trying to get to drowning here. For those of you, in case you see, well, I mean, if, yeah, if you, you, you used A to C with him for a moment. <laughs> uh, here's the thing. Uh, I'm very horrible at doing this. This is I'm horrible at every job I do. Anyways, uh, drowning. Fun fact about drowning. Drowning is often thought to be a violent struggle, 
where the victim waves and calls for help. However, in truth, drowning, drowning, there's no, there's only there's one. There's no here. second D. No second Everyone D. on the internet. <laughs> on the internet. <laughs> drowning, that's fucking weird to say. Drowning is often inconspicuous to onlookers. In most cases, raising the arms and vocalizing are impossible due to the instinctive drowning response. Waving and yelling, known as aquatic distress, is a sign of trouble, <laughs> but not a dependable one. Most victims demonstrating the instinctive drowning response do not show prior evidence of distress. So if you see, you really don't know someone's drowning until after they drown because it looks like they're just kind of doing their thing in the water, which is really? very dangerous. Yeah, it's, so if you see someone... Yeah, don't get too far out. Those undertoes are uh, absolutely terrifying. And if you see someone, if, if you're swimming with someone and you see them drowning, uh, don't help this is where it gets mean but it gets it's for everybody's safety don't help them until they actually submerge because one of the instinctive uh drowning responses is to grab onto any solid object and that's where a lot of multiple drowns come from by someone trying to help a oh, drowning they'll person. grab onto you and they'll pull grab you onto under. you and pull you under so this is kind of out of season this we probably should have included that yeah so if you're going on a well, if you're going on a fabulous tropical getaway this holiday season yeah. uh, if you're going to hawaii please avoid drowning so you can keep listening to this podcast if you're going to hawaii this holiday uh stay out of the ocean and and if you see anybody drowning don't do that so as a little tidbit, remember that in the summertime, Allie, when you're in the swimming pool. Okay. Or in the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> Noted. I just, you know, I, I want to save lives here. Well, uh, uh, speaking of Hawaii, I'm oh, glad you no, brought that up, man. Basil. I uh, can't believe oh, what a coincidence <laughs> that we're talking about Hawaii. I would have thought I mentioned Wait, that. What's that here? Facts about Hawaii? Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, amazing. Well, Hawaii. As we all know, it's our 50th state, formerly a kingdom, brought into the Union on August 20th, 1959. Again, year my mother was born. It was uh, probably my second favorite year after 1551, if I had to choose, <laughs> like, all years, like, rank order. Uh, a um, couple fun facts about them. They're the only state uh, in the Union that grows coffee. Uh, the Kona <laughs> Coffee. Uh, I've, been to, I've actually been to their plantation and I'm talking to. Do I was they talking draw to pictures a, in their coffee? Mm, no, because they're <laughs> just the beans. Like, uh, okay. Uh, this is a picture made out of coffee beans. Uh, they're not. It's like you don't really think of latte art and plantation in the same sentence. <laughs> Let me just. Uh, not even at soup plantation. No. Um, yeah, there. Uh, I was talking to a Hawaii native, someone who grew up there, and he was saying okay. that it's pretty much there. Like those. Plantations are pretty much there just for the tourists, for people to come and see, like, oh, my God, coffee. Oh, so they they're, like, actually... they're like, yeah, we don't care. Like, we don't give a shit about this. So they don't actually export it. I, I'm sure they do. A lot of places, if you see Kona coffee, that's, really, like, that's a cool thing to see on a menu. Okay. You can really jack up prices there. So I get, like, why would they make it and not export it? That's insane. Uh, um, here's something about Hawaii. Uh, I don't know if anybody's a fan of pineapple. Love, Love pineapple. It. Love it. Dig it. More than one third of the world's commercial supply of pineapples comes from Hawaii. Oh, yeah. Hawaii, killing it. Yeah, right. Hawaii. Citrus and coffee. So yeah. I hope they have a lot of antacid. <laughs> I actually know or knew, I don't know how much I know about Hawaii. I got in fifth grade. That was my state. Okay. I <laughs> yeah. do a state, or like a state it's fair. stuck with you ever since. Ever since. Um, but I always feel bad for the girl, like at Iowa. She dressed up as an ear of corn. Oh no! <laughs> you had to dress up. That's adorable. You dress up and do, you like, dress a up as a pineapple, poster. or do you like dress up like a hula girl? I think a hula girl, maybe, mm-hmm. but like not like a t- toddlers and tiaras hula girl. Yeah, like I had a t-shirt on, probably. Yeah, this was an era back when uh, <laughs> children were still children. Right, exactly. Yeah. 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 Pri- prior to the, the internet. Pr- the pre-honey bubonic age. <laughs> <laughs> the honey bubonic plague. <laughs> so, uh, Speaking a, across the Midwest. It's a simpler time. Stay indoors, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Back when they were just moms and not dance moms. <laughs> uh, there's a mountain on a... Um, <laughs> just, an island. just one. <laughs> there's just one. <laughs> just one mountain. Uh, and there was... Listen, it once was. Yeah. There's, it's, there's it is a, no more. <laughs> There's a tree, there's a mountain, there's lots of things here. And there's a crab shack. <laughs> uh, Mauna Kai, if I'm pronouncing Mauna that correctly. Kea. Mauna Kea. Mauna uh, Kea is the <laughs> Mauna Kea is the tallest mountain in the world, measured from its base at the ocean floor. Fun fact: uh, it's a, a mountain on Hawaii, thirty-three thousand one hundred yeah. feet. Yeah, if measured from the ocean floor, it's the tall. It's the uh, tallest mountain in the world. That is more than twice uh, Mount Everest's base to peak height. So that that's pretty interesting. I, on that? I'm never going to be there. Like, unless... No? You don't want to go to Hawaii? I, I was think... wa- no, no, I've been to Hawaii. I'm talking about oh. like, people who climb mountains for fun. Oh, yeah. 
oh, you see the footage, and they're at the top. They're like, we did it. And then they're, you know, they're just. Yeah. And I'm like, well, like, I'm eating Cheez Its. <laughs> <laughs> so who's the real winner? How's that oxygen taste? Thin. <laughs> the problem is climbing down. Yeah, well, I feel like uh, you just take the slide down or just... <laughs> like, I would just... If I couldn't zipline down, I don't see the point. See, it's like the the reward, the benefit, doesn't seem worth the cost. No. If I was dying up there... Because some people, you know, they get hurt or they yeah. lose oh, a limb. Yeah, or they wind up having whatever. to eat each other. Like, right. <laughs> I would think, like, is that worth it, the worst case scenario? And no. No. No way. Uh, There's but no then way. you can put that sweet bumper sticker on your car that lets everyone know that you climb mountains. My, my, my child climbed Mount Everest It'll... and ate its friend. <laughs> had to eat their friend. <laughs> my, my other child is frozen to death at the top of K2. Yeah. <laughs> my child died climbing Mount Everest. I'm some gonna really, make that bumper sticker. Some really, some really grim, like <laughs> honor student. Still brag I'm, gonna, about I'm it. gonna make that bumper and sticker. He, and he was an honor student. <laughs> I'm gonna make that bumper sticker just so when people pull up next to me, they'll be like, "Wow, he's a young dad." Yeah, it's like, <laughs> how oh, young man. was your son? Like, oh, but he also parent. he also wants us to coexist, so he seems like a nice man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I stopped reading bumper stickers. Yeah, yeah. How I do you do stop. that? I I won't give them the satisfaction. It's so hard. That's what it is. I mean, the ones that's like coexist, that's, you just see it, or the ones that says yeah. VT or yeah. whatever. But 26. Like, the 2. ones where you have to like try and read because it's a paragraph. I'm oh, like, yeah. fuck you guys. No. no. I love when the people have like eight bumper stickers. And it's like, I get it. You like a lot of bands. <laughs> or you hate your car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Your car is from 1996. Yeah. And they're all like coexist. <laughs> they're like, I just got back from Ozfest. <laughs> <laughs> The ones that always have, like, they got, like, the coexist, they got, like, an Obama, they got, like, a, a tr- another tree one. It's like, what do you, like, come on. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I just don't get it. I don't understand You that. don't hate those things, you just hate the person. I just, yeah, I don't, I hate the person. Yeah. The <laughs> for one, for one, the idea, the, the coexist thing, I really, it really grinds my gears. Like, I, like, because most of the, don't tell me to coexist, like, I'm coexisting. He's a very hateful person. You know what I mean? Like, I'm a, I hate people. Uh, no, um. The coexist baffles me because it's like we're already coexisting. Like to tell people to coexist is kind of like you're judging people to not coexist. Do you know what I mean? I feel like that, that, that bumper sticker came at all? about. It totally makes sense, but someone was just drawing a bunch of religious symbols, yeah. and then they looked kind. Of, they're like, "Oh my god, <laughs> mind explosion!" Because yeah, well, yeah. a lot of the people that I feel have it's a marketing that, thing exactly, and the people who have that coexist bumper sticker with all the religious symbols, they don't even know what they eat all mean. They don't, and they generally are the types of people who are like, "Oh, religion isn't real," so they're not even coexisting with people who are religious. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> religious. Fucking, I just had to yeah. cover a bullet hole in my trunk. <laughs> did, I, did I say Reli- a T? Was there a T there? Religious. 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 Here's the deal. He likes extra letters. I'm a huge fan of words and letters. <laughs> I will add letters to everything. Now, how many Ys are in religious? <laughs> uh, callback. I get it. Two, I see two, what you're doing. Two Ds. Mm-hmm. Two, two Ds. Ds. Yes. <laughs> two Ds. One at the beginning and one in the middle. <laughs> uh, well, unfortunately, on that note. On that note. On that very religious note. Uh, that brings us to the end of our show. Yeah. Ellie, Aww. thank you for being here. Thank you, Ellie. Thanks for having me, guys. Yeah. Um, so question where can people find you yeah, on you the internet what do you have going to on to lavish you with praise <laughs> and or um, this is where we this, is, this is the second half where we oh. spend 30 minutes talking about what you have coming no yeah <laughs> <laughs> no i really don't have any much to plug um uh, i mean you can find me on twitter yeah and what's uh, your twitter handle it's a uh, miss main with two D's. So, for those of you at home, that's M I S S M A Y N. Yes, a lot of people think it's Miss Man, and for a long really? time, probably up until I had ten thousand, fifteen thousand followers, a lot of people thought I was a dude. <laughs> they thought I was a dude. I thought that you made was... an account with my like a fake yeah. girl picture, and that was like, a, and I would play along with it a lot. Like, yeah. God, my dick hurts, or just like <laughs> uh, I don't know what guys say. That's what I'm always saying. I'm always saying that. <laughs> I've lost 18,000 followers just because the last 18 days my dick has hurt. <laughs> They're like, we get it. Your dick hurts. See a doctor. <laughs> awesome. So oh, the other thing is uh, I uh, wrote a web series. We started filming it over the summer, and then we just did a Kickstarter. We raised uh, – we were, we're asking for 10000 It finished off today. We got, I think, 11000 Good. Good. Yes. What's yeah. it called? It's called Kickballers. Kickballers. Okay. Yeah, so it's about a kickball – League. It, it I like it. Exists in a world where kickball is like the NFL 
and then uh, you have these two, these, uh, this boyfriend so silver girlfriend. Lake. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So we have a lot of like uh, jokes about hipsters mm-hmm. and just like ridiculousness. Sweet. And, and when are, when are you guys looking to uh, premiere that? Janu- or- well, we're shooting January. Oh, you're shooting? Okay. okay, so it hasn't started production yet. No, cool. no. That's awesome. I yeah. like it. Yeah. So I'll so, keep you guys post on that. Yeah, yeah. please do. That's we'll uh, we'll be working give on that a shout. Constantly. So. Yeah. Uh, then you have a podcast coming up? I do. Is that a thing? Is that and is is it? Okay. It's coming. Up, I remember you were we were talking about it. So I don't know if it's a thing yet or whatever. So, so uh, we recorded our first one last week and got way too drunk. Okay. <laughs> so that happened, and I listened to it, and I'm like, God damn it, Allie! <laughs> like, God damn it! Well, at so least we have this record. We, <laughs> Austerity. <laughs> we do. So, uh, yeah, we're gonna try again. What so the, you're not debuting that one? I am what's, going to. What's the premise? That'll yeah. be the lost apocryphal can, the episode you can release like five years down the line. The problem is that when I do a podcast, I listen to these. Mm-hmm. That one, it's like I nails on a chalkboard. Uh, okay. Me, because hearing myself be that oh, yeah. loose is like, oh, man. And to lead in with that, I'm going to do it. Yeah. I'm going to do it. Yeah. It's just I want to get like one more good one in the bag. I know what you mean. You want to make the right first with, impression. Right. I, oh God. So what's is the, what is there? It's uh, called "You Seem Fun." Okay. And, <laughs> <laughs> you seem well, fun. Let me just get eighteen drinks in me. Oh, yeah. you seem really fun. <laughs> so it's "You Seem Fun" with myself and my co-host Will Weldon. Very nice. Big, uh, big tits Weldon. Okay. I think it's just <laughs> old big tits. Well, yeah. I think that's his Twitter name. Oh, it's something like, <laughs> something that. like that. Will Weldon. Maybe that's his handle. He's hilarious. He's a great guy. The thing about that too is he's so loud. Okay. Uh, and I'm not. Well, I think I was perfect. getting I was getting stoned with the guests on the podcast. So you were getting drunk and stoned. Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you was... se- Allie, you seem really you fun. You seem fun. <laughs> Coming soon. My new best friend, uh fuck this. Uh, I'm joining that podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was it, it wasn't the intention though. Yeah. And that's not gonna be the normal thing. We we're just yeah, like you know, celebrating so a little things bit. Things happen and... sometimes. Yeah, yeah right. Things you know, happen. Who was the guest? Anything can happen on uh, a podcast. Lee Rubens Lee, okay. uh, Lee Rubenstein. Yeah, over at um UCB. Nice. He's just over there, and he, he does a lot of writing and TV. And really fun. Really fun. Sweet. Guy. So, Allie Maynard, uh, Miss Maine. Miss Maine. At Miss Maine. Or Miss Man, if you're a fan of Juana Man. <laughs> uh, kickballers coming soon yeah. to the internet. To You the, Seem Fun. Whatever. Uh, you Seem Fun podcast. Check that out. You'll black it back in. It'll be playing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right on. As always, uh, you can follow us on Twitter at TWL Podcast. Mm-hmm. You can email us at TWL Podcast at gmail.com. You can follow me on Twitter at my name is Razzle and the number two. My name is Razzle two, and you can find me on Twitter at osteoferocious at osteoferocious. And once again, uh, feel free to give us good reviews on iTunes, comments, etc. Share this with your friends. Uh, <laughs> send us some facts <laughs> this this season. Give the gift of knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> Download it on all your relatives' computers. Um, what am I missing, Dan? Do we, is this how we know? Uh, yeah, this is normally yeah, how we end it. We just eventually stop talking. Yeah. And, uh, you know, as always, uh, remember, uh, fiber is an important part of a healthy diet. Yeah. And uh, happy holidays and eat a lot of fiber, I guess. Yeah. And uh, be have, sa- have a safe holiday. Have, a, have happy, safe holidays. Uh, remember. Uh, you, oh, check out, you know, if you're going to drink and then have to get somewhere, check out Uber or Lyft. There's yeah. a lot of codes, like be joyful. You get like 50 bucks off your first Uber. Yeah, yeah. So uh, that's a fact that you can actually use. Yeah, do that and uh, be safe. And we might be taking next week off maybe for the holidays. It's uncertain yet. You'll find uh, out. You'll, <laughs> much like Christmas when yeah. you go out, run downstairs to see if there's something under your tree. Yeah. You'll find out. You'll find out. That's all I want order. for Christmas. Yeah. Just nothing under the tree. There's nothing under the tree. Just you guys. <laughs> Just us. Oh, help me, please. I don't I'm going to be out of town, here. sadly. Christmas is my least favorite holiday. I'm allergic yeah. to pine. What's your favorite holiday, real quick? Uh, Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Okay. Halloween. Solid. Halloween yeah. is mine. Okay. Really? I love dressing up. I'm more that, that whole harvest season is mine. Yeah. Respect that. Yeah. I'm more of a President's Day guy, because I love the savings. The mattresses. <laughs> yeah. I love not getting mail. I love getting a mattress <laughs> in my brand new Honda. Oh, actually, sorry. I meant Happy Honda Day. Okay. It's my favorite. <laughs> Happy Honda Day. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, Thanks for listening. Happy holidays. See you you in the new year. See you, New Year's. Now leaving Nerdist.com.